Smartphones are getting expensive. One year ago, I bought a destroyed Apple iPhone 6S. Looking to make the ultimate ultra-budget smartphone that Apple no longer sells. But in 2020, is a $100 five-year-old iPhone still worth it? Well, let's find out. Here's why I bought a used Apple iPhone 6S in 2020. Okay, wait, that's that's just way too cheesy. Hold up, let's let's do something a little bit different. Um, how about we do this? I don't know. About, oh, got it. What's up guys, Brady here, and today I am so excited to finally bring to fruition this project that I've been working on for almost a year now. Ooh, pop socket. Okay, so first off, here's a few things that you need to know. Specifically, this is a 64 gigabyte AT&T rose gold iPhone 6S. And let's just say it did not look this good when I initially bought it. With the goal to really learn the character and the, all the ins and outs of this phone, I bought this iPhone 6S used off of eBay in what would have been pretty much considered its deathbed. For the most part, it still functioned perfectly fine, where it mattered anyway, but it had a laundry list of different problems. The screen was shattered, and the Taptic Engine, as I would later discover, was also bad, and the battery capacity of the phone was down to 80% triggering Apple's trusty throttling feature, which made the phone about as fast as the 0-60 to 60 time of an AMC Gremlin. So, being the brave soul that I am, well, if you want to even call it that, I replaced all of the parts on this phone by myself with absolutely no prior repair experience whatsoever. Yeah, that was fun. In all honesty though, it really wasn't that bad for someone like me with only an iFixit kit, a hairdryer, and a trusty online guide to get me through the whole entire process start to finish. So I actually bought this phone back in March of 2019, and about four water seal gaskets, two screens, a bad Taptic engine, and a lot of time waiting for parts to ship from eBay along with a new battery later, this phone was good as new by April of 2019. And here is the final result of my handiwork. With all that said and done, I went ahead and took the SIM card out of my iPhone XS Max that I owned at the time and decided to keep it in my iPhone Success and use it as my main phone for about a week. Funny enough, it actually ended up staying in there much longer than I initially thought it would. I used this phone as my primary line for a collective time of about three to four weeks. And it did a really great job and honestly surprised me at how much it's not really that behind in 2019 and even now 2020. Okay, so first off, let's go ahead and talk about the most important thing that I replaced in this phone, the display. The standard size iPhone Success features a 4.7 inch LCD panel that Apple calls its Retina display. It comes with a 1334 by 750 pixel resolution with a pixels per inch count of 326. Fun fact, this is actually the exact same pixels per inch count on the base model iPhone 11 that Apple sells today. 
Although newer smartphones like this iPhone 11 Pro Max take advantage of a newer technology called OLED, which offers deeper blacks, more saturated colors, and an insane contrast ratio of nearly 2 million to 1. If you don't know what any of that means, basically the colors on this look more vibrant, the blacks look a lot darker, and the screen overall just looks a lot more pleasing to the eye. With that being said, compared to the newer types of screens that we have today, the screen on the iPhone 6s definitely won't blow anyone away, but for what it is, it does a really good job. Colors look accurate and are up to full RGB standards, although I will add in that the P3 color gamut that is featured in the iPhone 7 and up is not present here, but it's really a minor difference in the grand scheme of things. Other new technologies like HDR may not really be around, but watching movies and YouTube videos is still a totally enjoyable experience for this 2015 flagship. And in 2020, iOS 13 is also a really remarkable experience for a phone of this age. The phone is still remarkably snappy and can handle most daily tasks like checking Instagram, Snapchat, or just listening to a quick song on Spotify while sending a couple iMessages totally fine. Although I will point out that you probably shouldn't try to run any very graphically intensive games on this phone, lest it begin to overheat and slow down to the point where you can fry an egg on the back of it. But for everything else, the 6S does just fine. The 6S does have one major advantage over bigger modern smartphones though, its size. When compared to absolutely massive current flagship phones like the iPhone 11 and 11 Pro, the more grippable and portable size of the 6S shines through, making things like sending a quick text message with just one hand much more doable. For this category, I'm going to give this screen a 6.5 rating out of 10. Next up, let's go ahead and talk about the most important feature in my opinion, battery life. Battery life is extremely important to me. In an age where we've begun to rely on our phones more and more, these pocket-sized computers have begun to replace things like our wallets, plane tickets, digital cameras, and in my state, even the driver's licenses, actually. Yeah, that picture kind of sucks. <laughs> That's why the battery was one of the first things I looked at replacing as soon as I got this phone. At 100% battery health, the iPhone 6S delivers pretty good battery life for most moderate forms of use. And it can definitely get you through a full day, provided you don't play too much Subway Surfers or watch 3 hours of YouTube videos at full screen brightness. Heavier usage, however, is where the 6S really suffers, with screen on time of this type of use averaging at around 3.5 hours at best. So in 2020, this type of heavier dependability is where the 6S can tend to show its age. And it absolutely pales in comparison to the nearly 10 hour screen on time that I get with my 11 Pro Max with heavy usage on the daily. Seriously, I like never charge this phone at all, except at night. For simple things like sending texts, entering snaps, and making the occasional Instagram post though, the 6S works perfectly fine. If you currently own a 6S or are thinking about getting one in 2020, a battery replacement will make a huge difference. Apple only charges a out of warranty cost of around 49 US dollars for a battery replacement, which is a great deal. For this category, I'm going to rate the battery life at a score of about 5 out of 10. It's not terrible, but it could be better. Next up, let's go ahead and talk about the design. The iPhone 6S features the same design as the iPhone 6, a design which went mostly unchanged right up until the release of the 2017 iPhone X. In my opinion, it's actually aged quite well. The all-aluminum build coupled with the classic home button design still makes for a great combo, and aside from a few cosmetic differences, is hard to tell apart from newer phones like the iPhone 8 from the front. I especially love the rose gold finish. It has this bronze hue about it in different lighting conditions, and the white front glass makes it easy to spot from a distance. 
It's also the last iPhone to feature the headphone jack, which is very nice to have, but mostly irrelevant these days thanks to the rise of quality and affordable wireless headphones. Also, because AirPods. The cameras also aren't bad. With a 12 megapixel rear facing camera coupled with a 5 megapixel selfie camera on the front, providing perfectly adequate results for sending a quick snap or saving memories on social media, but honestly not anything beyond that. The camera looks pretty good on its own, but when you compare it to the 3 camera system on the iPhone 11 Pro with features like deep fusion AI and computational photography and HDR, it kind of just falls apart pretty quickly. Basically just stick to Snapchat and you'll be fine. The classic home button on the front also houses the second generation Touch ID fingerprint sensor, which is still just as fast now in 2020 as it was in 2015. It's also very accurate, unlike Face ID, I don't think I've ever had Touch ID misfire on me. This design has actually served Apple so well that they are reportedly slated at the time of this recording in the next month to release a brand new iPhone featuring the same design with updated internals. This category has aged the best in my opinion, so I'm going to give it a rated score of about 7.5 out of 10. So with all that being said, should you buy an iPhone 6s in 2020? Well, yes. But also no. The future of the success remains somewhat murky. Unless rumors of it getting an additional year of support with iOS 14 prove to be true, which they very well could, it can be assumed that iOS 13 would be the last software update of iOS that this phone receives. But after that, apps will still work just fine for a few years, but eventually it will become entirely obsolete. But if you're looking to get as cheap an iPhone as possible with current software support still intact, then the 6S still delivers a great value. And most models can be found on eBay these days for around 80 to 150 US dollars, which pales in comparison to the price of phones like the $1,200 iPhone 11 Pro Max. If I had to characterize the iPhone 6S in 2020 in one statement, it would be this. It's not amazing on its own, but it's great for what it is. And what it is, is a great budget iPhone. It checks all the boxes, whether it be Touch ID 2, decent battery life, a pretty good screen, not terrible cameras, and all of this in a design that has held up really well over the past five years. If you're looking for an iPhone to hold on to a little bit longer than a year or two, then I probably wouldn't go for the success. I would go for something at least like the iPhone 8 or 10 if your budget allows it. Anyways guys, that is going to do it for today's video. Did you enjoy this video or even find it helpful? Definitely consider leaving a like below and letting me know. Are you a current or past owner of an iPhone success in 2020? Are you considering buying one? Have you had to self-repair your own iPhone success before? Leave a comment down below and let's have a chat. And if you want to hear more from me, definitely consider hitting that big red subscribe button below and the notification bell icon next to it so you can always be in the know when I upload new videos. And as always, see you in the next one. Do you guys like my 24 to 70 that I got uh, pretty cheap? It's um, totally legit, you know? I just spilled coffee all over the floor. This production was shot in the shoals.